So, um, our, our next talk is going to be uh, Marius Kittel from the Open SCAD project. So, um, without further ado, uh, help me give a warm welcome to Marius. Okay, thanks, Ed. So, uh, yeah, I'm Marius. I'm the maintainer of Open SCAD. A lot of people say open SCAD, uh, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, we try to say open SCAD, and it sounds less, less like an open wound. Right? <laughs> so, um, uh, so open SCAD is a very small community of, of people. We are practically two main developers. Uh, it's me and, and Thorsten, who sits on the back here. Uh, and a handful of people who helps out with community management and uh, mailing lists and uh, writes code from time to time with the, whenever they their jobs uh, lets them. And uh, we also have participated in uh, Google Summer of Code uh, for a number of years together with uh, BRLCAD. And we also participated in Google Summer of Docs, uh, Google Seasonal Docs uh, last autumn that uh, has been really great. Um, and we have survived for more than 10 years, which is great. So uh, that's, uh, and people still use it and that's, that's amazing. And that's why we keep doing it. And uh, we also, OpenSCAD tends to kind of show up in all these kind of top 10 3D modeling tools for 3D printing lists. And maybe kind of after this talk, it will help you understand kind of what role OpenSCAD plays today and, uh, and why it exists. Uh, so I'll, for those of you who don't know about this project, I'll just give a really, really quick overview over the project and then talk a little bit about the title here, which is designing functional objects with functional objects. So first of all, OpenSCAD, uh, in one sentence, uh, it's a domain-specific language for doing 3D modeling using constructive solid geometry, and it comes with a really lightweight IDE. And I just cover that really, really quickly. So this is hello world in OpenSCAD. It's literally a sphere, parenthesis, semicolon. Um, this is also often in the OpenSCAD lingo called to instantiate uh, a module to, to create a shape. And uh, you can instantiate other, other objects that are built in to create more shapes. Or if you want to do something more complex, for instance, uh, creating a sphere with a hole in it, that is equivalent to taking the difference between a sphere and a cylinder. And, and, for, and it's, this is the OpenSCAD syntax. And for this reason, kind of OpenSCAD is often called a description language because you just describe objects. So in the same way as, as HTML, it doesn't have any kind of concept of time. You don't, you don't execute from top to bottom, it's just there. Um, also, it has zero boilerplate. So you write this, you get it. There is no build system. You just type this in and, and you get. So uh, and that's going to be really important for a lot of people later on. CSG, uh, it's a very kind of classic old concept. Uh, in short, you basically start with solid primitives. And then you perform certain operations on, on those primitives, and those operations are defined in a way so that the result of the operation, the object is still solid. And, uh, and the classic operations uh, in CSG are uh, unions, intersections, and, and uh, differences. And so how it works is that you basically, your leaf nodes are going to be your primitives, and then you, kind of, you hierarchically build up a more and more complex object by performing these operations. And then the root node of the, of the tree is going to be your final shape. And this is, this is what the OpenSCAD does kind of by, that you express using this, this domain-specific language. So we have a bunch of these primitives, not just the standard primitives. You can create your own primitives. You can import primitives. Uh, we have 2D primitives, including two-typed text. And you can import SVGs. And you can use those 2D primitives to create more 3D primitives through various extrusions, uh, all using this language. And we also have, in addition to the three classic CSG operators, we have a bunch of other operators that you can use. Uh, and some of these are, are operators that are really hard to, to do in classic uh, BRIP modeling. But we are also a language, so we have all the classic kind of language constructs. We have control flow, we have variables, we have list comprehensions, we have for loops, we have built-in functions, and you can, use, you can define your own functions, you can define your own shapes, shapes can be recursive. Uh, you can include and use libraries. So it's just like a, it's a full-fledged language, but it's not, it is still uh, a domain-specific language, so it stays in, in your own sandbox. You can't create a web server, and you don't want to create a web server. Uh, and 
So people tend to use OpenSCAD to create what they call parametric designs. And in this context, parametric designs are not kind of mathematical parameterization. It's more freeform logical parameterization. So if you want to say to create like a Lego brick, you would typically create um, a module in OpenSCAD with a name and, and a bunch of parameters. And then you or users of your, your library or module can then instantiate this object uh, to get your designs. And you can change your parameters to get different kind of variants, variants of, this, of this design. Uh, and it doesn't have to be kind of the same shape really. It's just really logical a way of col collecting different related designs into one package. And this is a very, very common way of using OpenSCAD to, to abstract your, everything into a module and then you instantiate that module. And, and, and you can package it as a library and so other people can use it. And we also have a really, really basic IDE. So it, it, our IDE is in practice a text editor with a 3D view and a bunch of buttons and menus that uh, are used for all the ephemeral stuff, right? Because when you save this file, only the stuff that is written in text will be saved. Everything else is just kind of moving cameras around so you can look at it. Um, and we do have a command line version that has all the features of the, of the UI. So for those of you who like to use the command line, you just input the, the file and you output whatever you want to output. Uh, a lot of people also like to use their own favorite text editors, uh, in which case we have support for that. You can hide this editor and it will auto reload whenever the file changes on disk. So that was kind of really quickly in seven minutes what OpenSCAD is. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about designing functional objects. Um, this is more like our historic view of, of OpenSCAD, why, why we started it. So, so when I see a 3D printer, I don't, I don't think rapid prototyping. I think kind of personal digital manufacturing. And to me, that means a few things. First of all, when you design a 3D design, the, the, the amount of time you put into that design very often needs to be proportional to the value of a single physical object of that type. So you can't hire kind of design engineers to spend kind of days and weeks on, on designing something. You have to do it yourself. Uh, do it yourself means that people who design stuff are not design engineers. They have minimal or no training in classic design tools or classic design paradigms. And three, objects don't have to be pretty. They just have to work in many cases. Uh, and that's very, very different from uh, when you, you design for manufacturing. Right? And so a lot of people have other needs for this, right? I mean, but enough people kind of have needs in, in this domain that it's, it's worth pursuing this idea of kind of pure functional designs that doesn't have to be pretty and doesn't have to be mass manufacturable. And so, we, so in the context of OpenSCAD, so when we started this project, this kind of grew directly out of the, the RepRap project, which is kind of creating a 3D printer that prints itself. Uh, it also grew out of hackerspace culture, in particular the, the MetaLab in, in Vienna, and it grew out of the of free software culture. And when we started this, we had these explicit goals that, that the main goal was that make it easier for non-designers to design for 3D printing. And we kind of designed it for ourselves. And uh, since we were programmers, we kind of made it easy for programmers to design for 3D printing. But uh, interestingly enough, that kind of a lot of non-programmers ends up using the, the tool uh, because because the language is so easy to, to, to express ideas in. Um, and the, other, the, the second goal was that we wanted to focus on creating simple and functional objects for 3D printing again, uh, and laser cutting. A lot, of, a lot of us use laser cutting a lot to, to, to play around with ideas. Uh, so that was an explicit goal. These days it's most 3D printing. And we wanted the science to be human readable. We wanted the science to be uh, easily version controllable. <coughs> And we wanted it to be natural and easy to open source your designs. Because uh, not only the code has to be open source, I mean, we can open source designs too. And, uh, and we tried to battle the idea of sharing STL files. Right? So, and it's kind of, so OpenSCAD is kind of good at certain things because of this, right? OpenSCAD is good today for creating functional objects, but also since objects are code uh, and tends to be structured like software, a lot of good stuff falls out of that, right? Things like, uh, abstractions, libraries, sharing, reuse, etc. Um, and OpenSCAD is also somehow good at very complex mathy stuff. 
And there's a bunch of people out there that do crazy, crazy stuff with OpenSK that I never imagined, but they somehow do it because it's very hard in other tools to do kind of uh, more kind of iterative recursive math stuff. Uh, but on the flip side, OpenSK is not so good at a bunch of other things. Like you can't do B-Rep style designs. If you want to add chamfers and, and fillets to your designs, you're kind of better off using other tools because it's going to be a bit kind of hard to get that to work properly in OpenSK. Uh, and if you want to do kind of organic shapes, you're kind of on your own, right? So, but if you've been in this dev room for, for a while, you, you heard about uh, FreeCAD and CAD Query, and those are both really excellent tools that kind of be, can be great companion tools to, to open SCAD if you want to go in that direction. And, and you don't really have to choose. I mean, a lot of people use open SCAD in conjunction with, with classic design tools. Um, and typically you would use open SCAD to create like quick functional sketches, and then you kind of start using an, uh, a different kind of a B-Rep style tool for creating your final design. And for instance, FreeCAD, they actually have an OpenSCAD workbench where you can basically import your OpenSCAD designs and then slowly kind of make it into uh, proper B-Rep designs. Uh, four minutes left. So, um, so with functional objects, so this is not actual OpenSCAD code, but it's kind of 90% OpenSCAD code. It's kind of an, an idea of kind of thinking about how we are moving uh, on, on the language side of things. So I often hear this complaint that OpenSCAD kind of claims to be a functional programming language, but it's not really functional. It doesn't have all the features, blah, blah, blah. And the idea here is that OpenSCAD doesn't actually claim to be belong to any particular class of languages. Uh, but we do take a lot of ideas from different places. And we have been quite pragmatic in terms of what features we include into the language, mostly to figure out how do we enable people to express some of their designs. Um, but also, I mean, to be fair to that criticism, OpenSCAD can be a little bit quirky at times. It has some kind of paradigms that doesn't really fit into people's minds very well. Uh, and the project kind of did escape into the world kind of at a very young age, and it got really popular really fast. And we didn't really want to disrupt that movement kind of while it was already happening. But since then, we have been slowly moving, kind of nudging things away to try to kind of make things more kind of traditional on, on, in the back end side, right? So, uh, and a lot of the power users, they really want to use kind of more powerful software features to create more, more, more fancy designs. And uh, so, we, for instance, we, already had, we always had pure functions. You can define your own pure functions. It's just that the functions were not really, they were really limited. We didn't have a good compatibility. Functions and modules lived in different namespaces. You couldn't have functions with values, things like that. Um, we do actually have now in the nightly build, we have functions as values. So you can create anonymous functions, you can pass functions as parameters, we have closures. So that kind of really kind of helps a little bit kind of moving things in the direction of a, of a functional language. Uh, and, and that's something we really want to focus on. And, and as a next step would typically be to have modules, which are basically shape generators as, as values and maybe even objects as values, but that's really kind of then we're starting to kind of push the limits of the geometry engine, what we can meaningfully do. And, uh, but the, the key challenges here is that it's, it's, it's really hard to design a language while it's being used. Uh, because backwards compatibility is something people really expect when it comes to design tools. If you have a 10 year old OpenSCA design, it will work today. And we, want, we wanted to stay that way and break as little as possible. And also syntactic complexity is something that is very hard for some people. Because a lot of OpenSCA users are not actually professional programmers. Adding a very complex syntax to, to express simple things is not something you want to do. You want to keep this kind of zero boilerplate, kind of you, you type in stuff and you get it as a high level thing. And, and if you want to build something more complex, we want to make that uh, possible. Right? Uh, we don't have a lot of time for the last few slides, but uh, we have some ideas what to do next. Um, in addition to the, the language stuff, kind of we do a lot of work on documentation. We want to do more on that. Uh, as I mentioned, we were part of Google Sys of Docs that helped us getting a really great uh, tutorial. Uh, we want to work on, on geometry engine and performance. We just don't have a lot of resources. And if anyone has any ideas about kind of how to deal with sustainability and funding of such a project, I would be happy to talk about it. We don't have any funding practically right now and everyone has their jobs. Um, and also kind of how do we move into the new kind of the, the new uh, platforms out there, kind of these days, kind of people want to run this on the Raspberry Pis and they want to run it on Android and they want to run it on Chromebooks, and it's complicated. 
uh, ideas there will also be really, really welcome. Uh, but the core values that have kept us alive so far is basically stability. We address crash bugs really, really fast. Uh, make it compatible, backwards compatibility, and make it hardware friendly. Allow people to run this thing on 10 year old computers. Don't require the latest GPU. And it, it won't work because our audience really wants, don't really come and use, uh, are not gamers basically, right? You can help. You don't have the right code to help. There's a lot of ways to help without writing code. Uh, writing code kind of causes us to have to do all these things. So if, if you have anything that you want to do, kind of get in touch. And that's it. Thanks for listening. So before I take questions, uh, we are trying to organize a really small kind of birds of feather session tomorrow. Uh, if you're interested, uh, just check kind of Twitter, check IRC, uh, and check the, the FOSTEM website, and uh, it will be available once you get the room tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, any qu uh, questions? One here, so. I've used OpenSK quite a bit, and you mentioned some of these. The things I would like, 2D and 3D paths, an extremely long path, Lofts and fill it in chamfer, and everything else is fine. Is there any scope for these things on the horizon, or is it ways off? That's a long list. Can, uh, can the you question was. Question first. Uh, the question was. Uh, Two D and three D paths. Um, yeah. So basically, kind of, how, how can we do kind of 2D and 3D parts? Uh, how can we do lofts, fillets, and, and chamfers? As, as I did mention, it's uh, since we don't really have it, it's not like an iterative design process. It's very hard to select edges and then apply chamfers to them. Uh, Quad Query has an interesting way of doing it, where you actually do you have selection operators. We don't have that because we are describing things bottom up. We don't really have any good ideas for how to do it. Uh, in terms of lofting and, and extrusions, it's easier. And uh, we are working in that direction. Uh, the challenge is that we need to be able to express uh, objects as values. So you can pass objects, or at least object generators, as parameters to functions. Like the one thing I had on the, on the screen earlier here was uh, an example of how you can, you can create a 2D object generator. You can pass that into a function, and you can pass it, uh, a function into a function, and then you can sweep along that, that path. And that's something that is semi-possible in user space today, but it's a little bit quirky, and we hope to get it kind of on the, on the radar really soon. But so the question is, uh, yeah, imp implicit CAD, you can get away, uh, you can get around some of these, these, these challenges because it has a normal language around it. And are we planning to embed a, a, a regular language into OpenSCAD? CAD? And uh, yeah, you can, and there are actually a bunch of projects kind of that live in that kind of ecosystem around OpenSCAD. CAD. <laughs> implicit CAD is, is one of them that does this really well. And uh, at, at, I think we kind of went on this road, and I think we want to stay on this road. And uh, but I'm I'm really happy to see other other attempts at doing something similar, where it's possible to at least share ideas and maybe share community, and and maybe down the road find ways to sharing code. Right. So, but I think I would I would I would let Implicit CAD kind of exp experience experiment with 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 going down that path, and at some point we might actually see the point where actually it's possible to kind of merge some of these projects into a bigger piece that. So we don't have to invent everything ourselves. Right here. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Jury. <laughs> uh, maybe one more question. This is like a short one, but uh, what's a good way to add like a web interface to um, do the parameterization of stuff? Like because I think like like often one designs things and it would be nice for people to have it even easier to use it. So like a website. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, also generated STL thing according to the parameters would be nice. Is there a smart way to do that? Yeah, is there a smart question? Was, is there a smart way to have a web interface to basically do the the parameterization as an end user when, after you have created the parametric design? And I mean, there are two things you can do. And one thing is that 
uh, in OpenSCAD, we now have uh, what we call a customizer, which is uh, not a web interface, but it's an interface where you can hide a text editor and replace it with an auto-generated UI. So people can just click drag and drop the different uh, free parameters that you have defined and then get an object out of it. I mean, uh, Thingiverse has a web interface for this. It's just not really well maintained right now. Uh, and it's also not open source. It's kind of your have to use Thingiverse. Um, but if you do upload it and open a sketch design to Thingiverse, it will auto-generate a website for doing these things. And uh, I personally don't want to spend a lot of time building websites. Uh, but everything is open source. I mean, if anyone wants to actually spend a little bit of time on it and host a website, I mean, I'm more than happy to kind of collaborate with that.